Hi, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today, I'm going to show you how to take this piece of hickory and make a really nice 10, 12 inch breadboard. A classic French breadboard. Um, matter of fact, I have a, here's, a, here's one I have. This is actually an antique uh, from France. Nice little board, kind of thing you'd find on someone's table. Bread sits on it in the morning, cheese in the evening kind of thing that is very handy and actually used when you're over in Europe. So, all that said, let's go to layout. So initial layout is pretty simple. I happen to have a, a set of trammel, trammel points here. These are actually from Wood River. They'll put a link in the bottom. Um, I've attached them to my uh, Starrett uh, rule. This happens to be a uh, 300 millimeter rule. So, I'm not actually using the dimensions on this. I'm just setting it up from the center to the edge to maximize my uh, distance. So I'll strike my line. And that's what I'll be following. Great little, great little piece of gear here. I think I paid uh, 15 bucks or so for it. Uh, highly recommend it. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to try and lay out my uh, my handle. So my handle is basically to come off the center some way this way, and I'll strike a line. And at this point, at this point, I'm trying to maximize the use utility of my uh, of my piece of wood. So I'm not sticking to any specific size out here. It's going to be about three, four inches long, about inch and a half, two inches wide. Matter of fact, I have a little block here. I think we'll use that for my uh, my dimension, for the width. It's a little random, little random piece of cherry that if you look at your hand, kind of nice, nice to hold. See how, how wide this thing really is. It's uh, two inches. That's about right. So two by three, roughly. So I'm just set, I'm just setting this thing right here in the center, kind of eyeballing it. And looking back and forth to make sure that thing is centered. So it looks good. Your eyes, folks, once you get start doing this very much, your eyes are the best method for laying a lot of this stuff out. You don't realize it, but you're pretty familiar and understand proportions and those types of things just by eye because you're accustomed to seeing things in proportion. So all I'm doing is extending these lines. And now I need to get something to strike a couple of arcs. So I'll be back in a second. What I want is a handle that's about two inches wide and about three and three, three and a half inches long. So all I'm doing here is setting up uh, a line at three and a half inches, just sketching that across. Lots of different things you can use for uh, radius. You don't need to go get something to make a radius, those fancy, fancy jigs and things. All you need is something that's round. So pick something that, that suits your eye. I have, this is a peanut butter uh, jar, so I'm just kind of using that lid, strike the radius here, strike the radius here, and there we go. Now this is, a, I don't know what this is, something that came in this, but it's what I'm going to use for the end, the end radius. I'm just kind of setting this in here. And there we go. So, super easy to cut out with either a jigsaw or a bandsaw. Next step for me is I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw, I think, and cut it out there. Okay, changed my mind. I'm using my saber saw instead of the uh, bandsaw. Bandsaw is set up for resawing at the moment. Didn't really feel like uh, redoing that, so we'll make short work of this for the saber saw.
Okay, the old saber saw actually worked. It's an old craftsman using old style blades. I don't have too many of those left, but I still like that saber saw. Uh, turned out pretty well. Now I have to do some edge sanding over on the uh, oscillate belt sander and uh, get this shaped up a little more. We'll round the edges and it'll be done. Let's go over to the sander. Okay, so quick sanding, we'll be all set. Let's make some noise. Well, closing on to the final steps. We're gonna hit it real quick with uh, some 220 grit sandpaper. Smooth it out a little bit, so let's make some noise. Okay, I have a 3 8 bit chucked in here. We're gonna ground these corners over. I'll put a link in the bottom for uh, the bit, if you're interested. some of the rough edges out but looks really good okay not quite done yet it's all sanded out matter of fact I sanded it out with uh, 320 on top of the 220 uh, kind of wants this to be a very smooth board uh, I need to put in a, a hang hole or a, a hole for a thong people have the thong here so I'm using a, a 916 inch forger bit the idea is to kind of keep the blowout from the back so I have it backed up here I found the center here. This is two inches wide, so basically I came in one inch from each direction. And I'll drop this in the center. And the hole's in. To the final steps here. Now we're going to oil the board. So I do two steps. One is I oil the board twice and then I throw on some uh, board conditioner or board butter, which is uh, something that I make up personally. Though you can buy this stuff online. So all I'm doing is taking food grade mineral oil and rubbing it into the uh, board, let it soak in. You can see the color, how the color pops out with that. So there's their coat number one. We'll wait for about uh, 30 minutes and then come back and put a second coat on. We'll see you in a bit. Got a couple coats on here. Now I don't put a lot of coats, like some guys will, will uh, dip them in oil and stuff. I don't normally do that because I don't like the way it weeps out afterwards. Um, two coats, three depending on kind of board. But for something like this, this is plenty. Also, too, the intention is this is really a breadboard. It's not really a cutting board that you're going to be washing regularly. So, it needs even less. But one thing I do want to do here is I'm going to be putting on what I have some board conditioner, board butter. And uh, this is something I make up myself. You can, too. All it is is um, six parts of mineral oil to one part of organic beeswax. And then throw it a one part of uh, coconut oil. The coconut oil is completely optional though. But you come out with this really creamy, soft, buttery substance. That's oil and wax mix. And as you rub this stuff into the board, the wax helps keep the uh, oil out of the pores. And when you're 
you're doing this, make sure you get the edges really well because that's the end grain is what sucks up most of the water. And make sure, of course, you get it into the uh, hole if you put one in there. Again, a lot of end grain in there. If you get water in there, boy, it just sucks it right up. It can cause the board to do strange things. So, looking good. Now that we have that on, we'll do a quick wipe. And there we go. That is one nice looking hickory breadboard. We'll be using that tomorrow morning for my toast. So, easy project. This makes a great, uh, great Etsy project if you're on Etsy. It also makes a great Christmas gift, guys. I'll tell you what, you can make, you can burn several of these things out for a relatively inexpensive uh, price. Give them to your friends. Put your name. Make sure you put your name on it. You know, always sign your work. Um, hey, links in the bottom to uh, the tools I've used and the materials. There's also a link to my blog, which is a little more in depth. It explains a few more things, uh, like how to make the board butter. <laughs> a few, if you're interested. And hey, hopefully you had fun making this and watching this. And if you did, hit, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And on that note, good making.